So is it over? Do we no longer have to worry about an asteroid destroying the Earth? Hi, I'm Mike Siegel. I'm an astrophysicist. I write for Ordinary Times, and this is The Throughput. So the big news in the last couple of weeks, bigger than anything I could talk about, was the success that the DART, the Double Asteroid Redirection Test mission, had in striking the asteroid Dimorphos. You probably uh, saw this on the NASA feeds. You've certainly seen videos and pictures on CNN and places like that. Uh, basically, this mission was launched about a year ago. It traveled about half a billion kilometers to uh, see if it could redirect an asteroid by simply crashing into it. It crashed within about 17 meters of where they were aiming, and we are still doing analysis to see how it has changed the orbit of that asteroid and whether it had the uh, impact, no pun intended, that we had hoped. And for this impact, we got some amazing live videos of the impact. N no, 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 not, not that one. N not that one either. No, not that one. Not that, uh, yeah, here we go. The origin of DART really comes from, I would say, the 1990s. In 1994, the comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 smacked into Jupiter, each uh, fragment smashing into it with the power of thousands of atomic bombs. And that was kind of a wake-up call. That kind of put it into our consciousness. It was only about 10 years earlier that the theory that the dinosaurs were wiped out by an asteroid had been confirmed. We had a couple of movies come out, some of which I've reviewed on this channel, and that really injected into our culture the idea of an impactor and the idea that we should do something about this. And it really got a jolt of adrenaline when the Planetary Defense Coordination Office was created in 2016 and to begin to seriously organize these efforts, efforts to see what's out there and potentially doing something about it. Planetary defense is actually a very serious thing. I've done two videos about movies that deal with asteroid impacts, Armageddon and Don't Look Up, link in the description below. Now, usually when we talk about this, people talk about a planet killer. They talk about the Chicxulub or some kind of impact that's gonna wipe out all life on Earth. That's useful, but I think the paradigm we need to think of is more like Meteor Crater out in Arizona, where a 170 meter wide nickel iron meteorite, basically about the size of Dimorphos, impacted. Fortunately, as you can see from the picture, it just missed the visitor center. But an asteroid like that exploding over New York, or exploding over London, or Tokyo, or Brazil, you could be talking about millions of people injured, maybe thousands of people killed. And it doesn't even have to hit land. Most of the Earth is covered by water. If you got a big asteroid to hit and say the Indian Ocean and create a tsunami, you would potentially wipe out millions of people. So these are very serious things. And you don't have to think of this in terms of planet killers. You can just think of this in terms of asteroids like the size of the one we hit, Dimorphos, that are 170 meters across that if it actually impacted on the Earth could cause that kind of regional devastation. Now, the number one question I get about the DART mission is, is it possible that we could have shifted that asteroid and now it's going to hit the Earth? Absolutely not. We pick this asteroid very carefully. First of all, it's a double asteroid. That's why it's called double asteroid redirection test. You have a large asteroid, Didymos, and then you have a smaller asteroid, Dimorphos, that is orbiting it. We hit the smaller one, Dimorphos, to change its orbit around Didymos by a very small amount so that we can do this safely, we can see what happens, we can measure the effects that this impact had. Now, the actual strength of the impact will depend on many factors. You know, the angle we hit it at, what it's composed of, what the topography of where we hit it is. So it will be a while before we know just how much we change that orbit. The other thing about this double asteroid is it does not cross Earth's orbit. Its perihelion, the closest it's get to the sun, is about 15 million kilometers further out than Earth. So there's absolutely no danger that we're going to create our own disaster here. That's why we picked it. The impact is going to change the orbit of Dimorphos by about a few uh, centimeters per second. That's not a lot, but if you think about it, you don't need huge changes to miss the Earth. The Earth is a very, very tiny target in space. If you stood at one end of a long hallway, the Earth would be the size of a grain of sand. 
If an asteroid were coming for Earth and you wanted to change the orbit of that asteroid, you only need to shift it enough to just miss the Earth, to move one Earth radius or about 6,500 kilometers away. Now, with this particular impact, it would probably take about 10 years, maybe more, for it to actually shift the orbit enough to miss the Earth. But if you can increase the energy of this collision by making a bigger impact or, or having it go faster when it impacts, you basically can move an asteroid enough that you could actually prevent an impact. So does this mean we're safe? It's over? We don't have to worry anymore about comets and asteroids hitting the Earth? Well, not quite. What this was was a demonstration of the technology, demonstrating that we could do this if we choose to. But there's still a lot of work that needs to be done before we actually have a bona fide planetary defense system. We need to be able to do this on a rapid time scale. We need to be able to do this with much more energy in case we don't have a lot of time, in case we don't have 10 years to prevent this impact. You know, there are many, many possibilities depending on which way our space program is going. We could build a large impactor in space and basically launch it from orbit to impact an asteroid. Uh, this would maybe be built from used stages of rockets and so forth. Depending on how our moon exploration goes, you could actually launch lunar rock into orbit, much less gravity on the moon to get to that escape velocity and fire that at the, at the asteroid and deflect it. We've now shown that we have the precision to do this. To give you an idea of how precise DART had to be, if you dropped a DART, pun intended, from the surface of the moon, this would be like hitting a letter in a newspaper in a moving truck. That's how precise this impact was. Now that we've shown we can get that precision, now we have to work on how we get things into space, how we get this done on short time scales, and that's gonna take a lot of work and a lot of uh, money to do. And actually the most important thing we can do may be from the ground. Asteroids we worry about. But most of the dangerous asteroids in the solar system we've actually mapped out. But as I've noted on my previous videos, the biggest danger that we face is that a comet may come in. Comets come from way outside the solar system, the Kuiper Belt or the Oort Cloud, way out there. And we may only have a few months of warning before one hits us. In 1996, Comet Hanukitake uh, came on us with only a couple of months warning and passed within 15 million miles of the Earth, which is a pretty close by astronomical standards. The biggest thing we can do right now is to continue to monitor the skies and to build our facilities, some of which are coming online, that will be able to scan the sky every night and detect comets as they come in as early as possible. The more warning we have of a potential impactor, the more time that gives us to build whatever we have to build to deflect it. And the earlier warning means we have to give it less push in the first place to make it miss the Earth. You imagine if this asteroid is way out here, we only have to give it a little nudge and over a long time enough time, it's gonna miss the Earth. Whereas if it's really close, we have to give it a pretty big nudge uh, to move it out of the way. So early detection is the key to, to, do it, to taking care of this. We probably won't be able to map out what's out there. The Kuiper Belt and the Oort Cloud are so far away and the things in them are so small and so faint. I don't think the technology will ever be there to do a survey of those bodies, but monitoring the sky this is something that they could crowdsource, get a lot of amateur people involved, do citizen science to look through the data that we're getting and be able to find many of the most famous comets that uh, we've had have been detected by amateurs. So this is something we should be having a worldwide push to keep monitoring the skies and look for this danger. Now, none of this is gonna be cheap. The DART mission itself cost about $300 million to do something much larger on a faster time scale, and especially if we want to do something from orbit or from the moon, that's gonna be talking about billions of dollars. But one of the ways to think of this sort of thing is that it's insurance. I have home insurance. I hope it will turn out to be the biggest waste of money in my life. I have life insurance. I have car insurance. I hope that will turn out to be a huge waste of money, that I will never have to use it. The same thing applies to uh, planetary defense. Planetary defense is not going to come cheap, and hopefully it will be a giant waste of money. But the cost of not having a planetary defense, the cost of having an asteroid or a comet coming towards the Earth and being able to do nothing about it, the cost of that could be a thousand times greater than the cost of planetary defense. So the way to think of this, when we start talking about the money, when we start talking about what missions we're gonna to put together, when we start talk talking about what we're gonna put up there, the way to think of this is it's civilization insurance. A lot of this channel is devoted to talking about science fiction movies. This was a science fiction movie come to life. Watching the video from the satellite as it closed in and almost like 
it, it was almost like a cartoon when it got closer and closer and closer and finally the last image was only partial because it smashed into the asteroid while it was transmitting it to us. In, in the 21st century, we're seeing a lot of science fiction concepts like rockets that land on their tails and being able to go send tourists into space and things like that come to fruition. And seeing something like this, a science fiction that not only is cool, but potentially save lives, that's something that I absolutely am enthralled by. And when you talk about movies, this has been a subject of many movies. It's something that's in our public consciousness and something I'm glad we're finally doing something about. So that was fun to talk about some real science. And again, I can't imagine anything more important to talk about than what Dart did a couple weeks ago. Um, our last video actually kind of went crazy. Uh, we got way more views than we're used to. We're now up over a thousand subscribers. I can't begin to express the uh, how grateful I am for all the attention and how humbling it is to find that so many people uh, enjoyed the last video and kind of intimidating it is to try to keep up with that and try to provide content that you guys will continue to enjoy. Uh, but I, I thank you so much for uh, supporting the channel. Uh, please continue to support it by clicking subscribe, recommending it, hitting that like button. That's what bumps us up so that people see us and, uh, and gets the attention to this channel. Uh, given the response, I'm hoping to do some future lists. I've got a few written down and uh, hopefully we'll get that. In the meantime, I'm Mike Siegel. I write for Ordinary Times. Thank you for watching.